Now for our story. It was the afternoon following Bill Mead's return from the Army Separation Center in Oregon. He had talked with Kit just after his arrival in Wakefield, had told her he wanted to file suit for divorce immediately. But Kit had refused, had defiantly insisted she had no intention of divorcing him. And so Bill Mead had told his wife that he would get the divorce himself. Now on the following day, Bill walks into the bank, goes up to the little swinging gate which separates David Bowman's domain from the cashier's booth. Bill Mead, come in, come in. Hello, Mr. Bowman. <laughs> Uh, sit here, Bill. All right, thanks. Well, it's good to see you in civilian clothes. <laughs> Come to think of it, this is the first time I've ever seen you out of uniform. Yeah, I guess it is at that. Well, how does it feel to be a civilian again? Ah, oh, it feels wonderful. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, I'm not quite used to it yet. I hardly know what to do with all my freedom. <laughs> yes, I know. Man gets kind of accustomed to that rigid routine. Yeah. I felt awful lost the first few mornings, about 6 a.m., not having to fall in for roll call. <laughs> well, you'll soon get into the groove again. Oh, sure, you bet I will. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> well, you told me to come and talk to you when I got out, Mr. Bowman. Here I am. Fine, fine. I've been thinking about your proposition, and it sounds good to me. I'd like to jump right in and get started as soon as possible. Well, that sounds good to me, Bill. Well, let me see. I think I outlined the idea to you when I mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. You know more or less what the job entails. We need someone to handle farm and agricultural loans and investments. There's going to be a lot of expansion in the next few years, and naturally we don't want to be asleep at the switch. With your background, you ought to be able to make a very good thing of it. Well, I'll sure do my best. I haven't all the details worked out yet. I'm so swamped at the moment that I'd rather not go into it today. Oh, sure, that's all right. I, uh, I just want you to know that I'm ready whenever you give me the go-ahead. Good. Uh, why don't you come up to dinner tomorrow night? We'll uh, have a good long session and get the thing rolling. Oh, thanks, Mr. Bowman. That'll be swell. Uh, uh, come about 6.30, hmm? I'll tell Sarah to whip up something special in the way of a meal for a retired soldier. <laughs> don't go to any trouble. Uh, after months of living as a bachelor, I'm not used to anything very fancy. Oh, that's right. You're not a bachelor anymore. I heard the kit was back. How does that affect your plans, Bill? Well, Mr. Bowman, I told you pretty much how I felt when I talked to you before. Yes, I remember. But I wondered if you might have changed your mind since then. Have you seen Kit since she came home? No, I haven't. I haven't seen Kit or the baby. But I understand he's a very fine youngster. Oh, yeah, he is. Quite a little guy. Well, that's good. I'm glad it turned out that way, that the child is healthy. But I imagine that makes it even harder, in a sense. Yeah, it does. But I still feel that a divorce is the only answer for Kit and me. There's just no other way. Well, the whole thing is very unfortunate. You know, as a rule, I make it a practice not to express an opinion about what other people should do with their personal lives. Oh, but... sure, I understand. I, I don't expect you to. But in this case, I must say I agree with you, Bill. Too bad things are the way they are, but personally, I can see no solution except a divorce. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, Mr. Bowman. See, I, I realize that a lot of people, not knowing the background, are going to regard me as, well, pretty much of a heel. And still, I have to stick by my guns. Of course you do, Bill. Kit must understand that, too. Yeah, but that's just the trouble. She doesn't. No? How do you mean, Bill? Kit's refused to get a divorce. And I'm surprised that she feels that way, too, because it seems to me she'd realize that it's something we have to do. Well, Bill, I'll confess I'm not entirely surprised. I think I understand her reasons. I wish I did. It's the old story, Bill. Kit's very much like her father in a lot of ways. Yes, yes she is. I know that. But even so... I... Have you decided what to do since Kit refuses to get a divorce? Well, I don't know if I did the right thing, Mr. Bowman. It wasn't very sporting of me, because I know it's generally the idea that the woman should file for the divorce. But it seemed to me there was only one thing I could do. I told Kit I'd get the divorce myself. I see. Well, it's too bad Kit has the stubborn Calvert Street. But she has, and 
That's that. As I told you before, it's not my affair, Bill, but I must say I don't see what else you could have done. And I only hope that someday Kit will realize that herself. Oh, I hope so, too. But I'm rather inclined to doubt it. Well, of course, that would depend on her getting away from Ben's influence. Yeah. Well, the best thing to do is to get started and get it over with. Do you have a lawyer? No. Hmm. But I think I know the very fellow who can handle the case for you. An old friend of mine. McKillop's his name. Angus McKillop. <laughs> we we call him Mac. <laughs> he wouldn't be Scotch by any chance. Oh, yes, indeed, he is. <laughs> He's quite a character. <laughs> I think you like him, too. Doesn't say much, but everything he says counts. Well, sounds like a good man. Suppose I give him a ring and tell him you're coming over. Mr. McKillop? Mac. Just call me Mac, everyone does. Uh, I just saw Mr. Bowman. I know. Said... Sit down, lad. Sit down. You don't need to tell me anything. I know all about you. You do? But... Hey, look, lad. This isn't a very big hamlet. There's not much to do but talk. And a lawyer's job is to keep his eyes open and his mouth shut. <laughs> well, that sounds like a pretty good rule for everybody to follow. It's a good rule. You're right. But nobody has that much sense. Except me, of course. <laughs> well... Uh, what I wanted to talk to you about was... Uh... Come on, lad. Come on out with it. If it's worth thinking, it's worth saying. <laughs> okay. I um, wanted to talk to you about getting a divorce. A divorce, eh? Yeah. From my daughter, Ben Calvert. Her name is Kit. She returned from California not long ago with a baby. A little boy. Well, you really do know the setup, don't you? Of course I do. I know the Calverts for a long way back, too. You may have trouble... But don't worry, we'll take care of it. Well, what I thought was that maybe if I started proceedings, Kid would realize that I really mean it, and yes. then... Stop hesitating, boy. Speak up. Well, then maybe she'd be willing to go ahead and get the divorce herself. It's more customary that way for the woman to get it, isn't it? Nothing a woman does is customary. That's what divorce is. There's no rule. The eager fish repent within the net. Young lovers wish. Married men regret. Hmm. Now, let's get down to the meat of it. Have you thought about the grounds? Grounds? Yes, you can't just divorce a woman for no reason. You have to have a reason. You got any? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. But, well, to tell you the truth, Mr. McKillop, I don't know much about these things. You see, I never got a divorce before. I should hope not. So, you see, you'll have to explain the whole procedure to me. I hope it can be as clean-cut and friendly as possible. It can be clean-cut, my boy, but as to friendly, I, I don't know. That depends. Divorce is usually not a friendly occasion. Yeah, I'm aware of that. But, well, you know what I mean. I don't want to hurt anybody if it can be helped. We'll do our best. What about the boy? The baby? Do you want custody or does she? You'll have to settle that. Well, I... I haven't thought about it. I mean, I want to be responsible for the child to support it, but... Uh, You'll have to think about it very carefully. Well, think about it and let me know. I have an appointment now. You'd better come back tomorrow. Be prepared to answer a lot of questions. Make up your mind what you think. And remember, the main question is, what about the child? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Mr. McKillop. I'll be here tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Goodbye, lad. And remember, the question of the child is the most important one. Bill Mead walked slowly down the stairs of the office building. The lawyer's abrupt manner had startled him at first, but before he left, he had complete faith in the man. And McKillop's last words still rang in his ears, the decision he must make. What about the child? That would be a hard question to answer, Bill realized. And yet, he must face the question. He must decide at once what would be best for the child, as well as for himself and Kit. Kit.